2024's The Beekeeper review and thoughts. So I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I mostly loved. It is quite silly, but it's very enjoyable. This video will have some jokes, none of them expensive members of minorities, and we'll get to some serious topics. I realize this video is long, but I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I, over the course of it, decide I want to, I'm going to verbally warn for you so and hold up an index finger so you can mute and skip ahead and choose to see me lower my index finger. But as soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers. So, yeah, this is R-rated, and it's one of those things, sometimes you'll watch an R-rated movie and find yourself thinking, why aren't all movies R-rated? And this is something that, you know, director David Iyer and writer Kurt Wimmer are both very, very good at making you feel. And, yeah, um, I'm definitely going to be swearing in this video. Yeah, I hit record on this as soon as I got back from the theater. I've only watched it once. Yeah. Um, so the the plot... Yeah, the, this, you know, lovely elderly woman, you know, is, is tricked by this phishing scam. And Adam Clay, who you know, has a, you know, has sympathy for her, it goes to, to get revenge after this. And, yeah, so the, yeah, um, this was written by Kurt Wimmer. It has Wimmerisms all over it. Um, yeah, the, you know, I'm not the first person to point out, you know, Film Brain also pointed out, you know, he doesn't really like tension in his action scenes, it's just, it's more kind of, you know, isn't this guy cool, he's wiping the floor with these guys, including people who should provide at least some challenge, and, you know, personally, I do find it works the very best when... It's also Wimmer directing his own, you know, I think Equilibrium, you know, really, really nails it. Also, in part because of how stylized his directorial style is, especially during, you know, stuff like action and, and yeah. Um, but this is, you know, very, very funny. If, if you like Wimmer, this is definitely, yeah. Um, let's see, yes, uh, so worst to best ranking every movie other than, other than this one that Kurt Wimmer has written and or directed that I've watched, I know it's not all of them, I haven't watched all of them, Expendables 4, Ultraviolet, Salt, Total Recall, Sphere, Equilibrium, and Street Kings, and the worst to best ranking of every movie that David Iyer has written and or directed that I've watched, Taking Lives, Suicide Squad, U571, Sabotage, Dark Blue, SWAT, Harsh Times, End of Watch, Training Day, Street Kings, and Fury. And, yeah, uh, the only two movies that either of them have worked on that I have only watched once. You know, most of these I've watched more than twice. But the only ones that I haven't are Salt and Expendables 4. Honestly, I probably will end up re-watching Expendables 4. Salt just was not my kind of thing at all. And let's see. The um, let's see. Yeah, um Josh Hutcherson is so much fun in this. Um the only this is other than this, the only thing I've seen him in are the, the Hunger Games movies. And it's just, he's, yeah. Um, I knew I was going to have fun watching him in this because he is just, like, weapons-grade douchebag in this movie. He is so despicable. You just hate him from the moment you see him or hear him. 
you know, I knew that was what it was going to be from the trailer and from reading reviews. It's so much fun. Um, in there's there's one scene in this where he says fuck more times than he would have been allowed to over the course of every Hunger Games movie he was in combined. It just yeah. Um, they've got he's got this like. Logan Paul haircut. There's, I, I think they're doing a sort of like Zuckerberg thing, although it's it's not quite like IRL Zuckerberg. It's more like, you know, the the I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, but yeah, the the movie Zuckerberg. You know, Jesse Eisenberg Zuckerberg, the the one that has some charm and and self awareness of of you know, and and just yeah if um the the um they have this like several of the antagonists are just these like bratty young white men who are just unbelievable like they're so whiny and they're just so obnoxious and it just you know Watching Jason Statham going after these, it, it's just, it's its so much fun. Uh, let's see, I, th I think that might... Oh, right, right, yeah, I've watched Jason Statham in a bunch of different things. Really fond of him, both when he's kicking ass in action movies. Also the ones where he's more of a straight man, like Lock, Stock, Troop, Smoking, Barrels, and Snatch. And yeah, um, you know, he's he's a lot of fun here. He is just one of those guys, you know, yeah, it's just a lot of fun watching him just completely, you know, move his, his pinky a tiny bit and, and everything around him explodes. It's just, it's fun, you know, it's, it's completely ridiculous, but it's fun. And, yeah, um, some reviewers say that the movie appears to believe in certain conspiracy theories, and, yeah, um... I can absolutely see that. I'm going to talk about it in the spoiler sections. And I, I, you know, this is not the first time that they've put something in that, yeah. And I think that might be about, um, let's see. Um, yeah, so, you know, there there is a certain level of, of grit to, to the movie. The, the, there's a, a decent amount of, like, handheld camera and fairly swift editing. Not so much, I, I was never, I, I never lost track of what I was looking at, though at times it does, yeah, some of the, some of the shot lengths and, and, the way it cuts can can it it pushes it right up against the edge, but I don't, in my opinion, it never crossed into just being mush. I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending. The ending fits what came before. I came close to loving the ending. I think there's elements of it that are just about perfect, but stuff that yeah, I'll I'll probably talk about in the in the spoiler section. According to Google, there was no uh, post credit scene for this, and I did not stay to check. Uh, let's see. I think that... Um, yeah, I, um, I don't have a huge amount to say about, like... The cast of it, you know, Josh Hutcherson is is the one that's like incredibly fun to to watch, and he looks like he had fun. Some of the cast, especially some of the veterans, are kind of phoning it in, but but Hutcherson, yeah, he's he one hundred percent like yeah, he he came to play, and the the. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I would definitely say like Jeremy Irons. There's definitely some fun uh, parts, and he he's given some some you know amazing lines, just complete action schlock cheese. 
and I, I, you know, I thought he seemed more awake here than he was in the Assassin's Creed movie, but it still, you know, it, it is this thing of, like, you know, he knows that this is way beneath, you know, he, he, so, so, yeah, but he's definitely fun, yeah, about the same for, for Mini Driver, I think that might be the ones that, oh, right, uh, apparently some people really hated Emmy Raver Lampman as Agent Verona Parker, I mean, I think it's mostly just the material she's given. I didn't think that she was particularly bad. It's just pretty thankless role, more, in my opinion, more so than than her. But yeah, there's several reviewers who just completely despise her. Uh, let's see. Right, but yeah, you know, the movie is basically a live-action cartoon. It's it's ridiculously over the top. You know, the 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 characterizations and the some of the set design, like you you see some of these like phishing scam call centers, and there's one where there's like this wall of of like images. Of like these elderly that they that have been scammed and the like the money that has been taken from that that the call center employers employees have taken from these people have, are like written across their faces. It's just it's, yeah, it's it's cartoonish, you know. Like don't get me wrong, one hundred percent, you know, fuck those guys. I hate them. I I have absolutely no problem with you know. I'm just saying. There's no way that this is actually what it looks like. But it's a fun, you know, it's fun to imagine that this is what it looks like. And to imagine Jason Statham going up. Like, one of these places he actually, like, he he tells all the, the you know, people working at the call center, repeat after me, I will not prey upon... The defenseless, you know, something like that, not not verbatim, and it's just, you know, it's pure wish fulfillment. But yeah, it's it's really fun. Let's see, you know, what one of the key aspects to this sort of thing is getting the audience on board. If you don't want to see the protagonist kick the ass of the antagonist and his men, the movie's just not going to have as much of an impact. You know, if I never again see a movie where the bad guys are drug dealers, drug runners, or the like, I will be perfectly happy. The war on drugs was always self-serving, not actually trying to help people. This movie tries to work for the zeitgeist by having the enemy carry out fishing, and let's see, yeah, you know, the 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 um, let's see, yeah, Clay is getting revenge for this trusting middle-aged elderly woman having been tricked. This is, of course, something there is a lot of attention about these days. And while it's silly to think that it's a problem that, you know, could have even a dent put in it by an exceptional individual military training and hardware, it's definitely cathartic to watch. Now, I think that might be about... Yeah, so the action, you know, there's not a lot of tension, but... It is really cool looking, and they do a decent job of, like, variety. A lot of it is, like, these, you know, it's it's almost always, like, curb stomping as far as, like, you know, yeah. The, the, usually Statham's character is up against multiple people at once, and, you know, yeah, there's, there's hand-to-hand -hand combat, and there's shooting, I wouldn't have minded if there was, you know, maybe also, I suppose I don't want to say, because that's going to tell you that that's not in there, but a slightly bit more variety, I definitely think they could have easily fit in with, you know, slight rewrite. Now, this was filmed in Boston, London and other parts of 
England also. And yeah, they found some really good locations for some of this stuff. Really makes it, yeah, um, adds to the the engagement by the viewer. Uh, there's some really great sound design. There's some really gnarly, you know, just yeah, some of the, some of the stuff that you know when when Jason is brutalizing someone. It's really, it's, yeah, very very visceral really nice to know. Also, usually, like, a lot of the effects for that stuff is, are, are pretty good. Uh, a lot of it looked practical, but there's definitely some CG, and it's one of those things where just, again, like, if you can't make it look convincing, try to avoid CG. And, and yeah, unfortunately, the movie does not do that as much as it could and should. A uh, lot of B puns, a lot of lot of talk about how, you know, the, this thing of oh, you know, he's a beekeeper, he protects the hive, kind of stuff. Really, really cheesy, really ridiculous. A lot of fun. Uh, the movie is in total. If if you don't count the end credits, and again, apparently, no problem leaving before the end. Or once the end credits start, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, about an hour and 36 minutes, you know. And it, during that time, it, it packs in a really good amount of action. There's really... Um, it doesn't, like, open with a big action scene, and there is maybe... Uh, maybe about 10 or 15 minutes, maybe slightly more, before the first, like, real action scene... But once the action starts, it does really, you know, yeah, there's a really good amount of it for, for the rest of the movie. And, yeah, um, the best element of the, the film is just, you know, yeah, turning off your brain and enjoying something completely ridiculous and really cathartic. And, let's see... Yeah, um, the worst aspect, and I don't think this is a big deal, but ultimately, it's just not quite as good as earlier David Iyer, and it's not, you know, it's not Kurt Wimmer's best either. And, uh, let's see. I think that is about, but but yeah, you know, super happy to see a David Iyer. You know, he, the last couple he made went to Netflix, and I don't have Netflix. Maybe I'll be able to watch them at some point. You know, but the the um, yeah, really glad to be able to watch a movie of his in theaters again. And yeah, you know, he's just he really does a good job staging these things where it's just it's this you know macho bullshit kind of stuff and yeah just the the um, if if you like a David Iyer movie there's a pretty decent chance that you'll find something to love about pretty much all of them you know Actually, yeah, um, the last time I was able to watch a David Iron movie in theaters was 2016's Suicide Squad. You know, he's made, like, two for Netflix. I, I was actually a little bit worried that I would not get to watch another feature film in theaters by him, especially after the reception to the Suicide Squad from 2016. Uh, the trailers do give too much weight, but also give you a really good idea of what the movie is like. Cover and poster do not give too much away and give you a decent idea of what the movie is like. So yeah, the this has a 71% the, um, on Rotten Tomatoes. 167 reviews total. 
118 of them fresh. The, the average score is 5.90 out of 10. 92 percent from from audiences based on 2,500 verified ratings. The average rating is 4.5 out of 5. Wow. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, critics consensus cheerfully undemanding and enjoyably retrograde. Beekeeper proves that when it comes to dispensing action thriller justice, Statham hasn't lost his sting. Audience says, fast-paced and full of action, the beekeeper delivers everything Jason Statham fans will be looking for. Very true. And on Metacritic, it has a 54 from critics, based on 37 critic reviews. Uh, let's see, 18 mixed, 14 positive, 5 negative, and from users, it has a 6.0 out of 10, based on 107 user ratings, 54 positive, 31 mixed, 22 negative, and let's see, yeah, so on IMDb, it has a 6.4 out of 10, based on 57,000 ratings and yeah 25.1 percent gave it a seven 20.4 percent gave it six so very very popular very positively received there are currently 438 mdb user reviews or 558 if you count the ones with spoilers and I think that might be about it, yeah the the I suppose I've already somewhat mentioned but yeah the 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 aspect of it where it's just like this really cathartic really huge kind of violence you know we're we're watching it's basically this thing of of like vigilante justice you know we're we're getting a vicarious thrill and seeing some truly terrible people have really really awful things done to their bodies you know and yeah it really delivers on that they they came up with some stuff where you're you know you're, you're sitting in the in the movie theater and like oh, that looked painful kind of thing you know very very nicely done and yeah um I rate this seven cathartic action flicks out of ten, and yeah, that brings us to the the updated rankings. So yeah, um, I would say this. Yes, um, so. David Ayers, written and or directed, that I've watched. Worst to best, Taking Life, Suicide Squad, U571, Sabotage, Beekeeper, Dark Blue, SWAT, Harsh Times, End of Watch, Training Day, Street Kings, and Fury. And the Kurt Wimmer ones, Expendables, Ultraviolet, Salt, Total Recall, Beekeeper, Sphere, Equilibrium, and Street Kings. And that brings us to the spoiler section. So from here on out... I will spoil everything in this movie, starting with notes taken while watching. So, I love that there's the, the B stuff starts right away. Like, the opening credits has, has stuff of, about how, you know, ah, oh, bees are, they're, they're so important. And they are, to be fair. Actual bees are extremely important. To... And let's see. I, I love the how ominous they make Statham at the very start. And we see he is a literal beekeeper. And let's see. Yeah, you know, he the the he says, you know, no one's taken care of me before to, to her. And 
I gotta say, I kind of thought they would actually explore that, like that we would be told, oh, you know, when he was younger, this and this happened. They didn't really do, yeah. Um, the the, but but yeah, you know, very nicely. He you know, he's protecting the 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 hive. He he goes and gets these hornets. And carefully removes them and and fries them with this thing, you know, methodically. Which, you know, that is it's is one of the things that they'll they teach you about screenwriting. You know, if you can, the first thing, the first thing a character does, the first thing that happens in the movie, if that can be like foreshadowing, if that can like tell the audience who this character is, what they're all about. That can work really well, and yeah, you know, when he is a, when he functions as a literal beekeeper in addition to be, you know, basically the rest of the movie is him doing to America what he did to, to the, the barn in this first scene. And yeah, we meet Boyd. Um, I'm not really seeing the the actor um, I kinda wanna give credit cause I thought he did a fantastic job huh did he did he give a the wrong name to nah. um, okay I'm not really seeing who oh or wait was it Mickey Garnett, that sounds Yeah, yeah, I that's that's him, yeah. Um so the actor is David Witz. Fantastic job. Like you just hate this guy from immediately Oh wow, and he's English. Good good job on the accent, I couldn't tell at all. Um yeah, just from from immediately. He's just such a douche. And you know he's he's bullshitting. Uh, let's see her uh, Eloise and Miss Parker. Sorry, and and you know, okay, just go to the you know friendlyfriend.net. Wow, yeah, that's and I do appreciate like that is actually yeah you know that's the that is sadly some honestly. I kind of love that the movie could actually, like, when you watch that scene, yeah, like, all the stuff that he says, you know, not all of it, but some of that stuff, that is actually what, you know, phishing scammers will, will do. They get you to download something, you know, they, they, they get they get you to log in to something and and you know these these various kinds of things, so so yeah you know maybe someone watches this movie and be like oh okay it's, you know it's, you know I want to thank you too you told me what not to do kind of thing and it's, yeah that and and honestly you know I've I've never seen with my own eyes but I I doubt. But it does feel satisfying to imagine that that's how the you know, you know he's he says oh I've I've got kids I don't got fucking kids just just he, oh you just you just hate this guy you just hate his guts and can't wait to see Statham you know just yeah it's 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 such such fun um let's see and. Yeah, you know, he's he's training the room to to do the same thing later and you know <laughs> there's like an air horn when they when you know to to mark the victory which just wow. And let's see. Yeah, and and you know, so he brings he makes some um right, also yes, before I get to that the the um, the bit of her like realizing, you know, and there's like 
two or three seconds. It feels like an eternity, but a few seconds where the screen, her screen is just black. And then it pops back and she sees that, you know, all the money is gone, including the, the charity. And, you know, yeah, we see later she, she shot herself. I appreciate that the movie didn't feel the need to get, like, ridiculously graphic with her, you know, in... To, to to hype myself up for this movie, I've been rewatching some of the, you know, in addition to the the various, uh, you know, Wimmer and and Iyer movies that I own, I also watched the the 2008 Rambo movie, you know, Rambo Four, and it's been said, it's been, I'm just pointing out that movie really like every time there's nearly every single time there's violence it's extremely graphic even when it's like happening to people that you know yeah when it's happening to to people that we we sympathize with and sometimes it just it, it pushes it too far I really appreciate that they didn't feel the need to do that here but yeah um, you know clay has has made this pot of honey for her and you know that is the one that he ends up using to to set a blaze uh what she called Anis Anaset the 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 beekeeper that took over and see. yeah uh Adam ends up being arrested by Verona and yeah, they're they're really reluctant to believe that she committed suicide, and we get this thing of, you know, normally I would be like, really, do we have to, you know, when when they say, you know, no, she would not have, have committed suicide. She loved life. If we hadn't seen her, I'd be like, come on, that's really, you know. But no, it's it's pointing at, you know, we the audience already know. You know, we know she didn't. She didn't kill herself. We know. Uh, we know she did kill herself, which means. But but before that, we saw how happy she was to be alive. So that tells us how hard this hit her. Uh, you know. But yeah, the the. Um, it would have been really obnoxious if we hadn't met her and seen how that. Let's see, and and yeah. Um, Verona really suspects Adam, and I brought her honey. Who are you? Winnie the fucking Pooh? <laughs> and... Let's see... Yeah, um... Verona is like, are we just gonna ignore that there's a white guy with a weapon inside the... Is this supposed to be like a reverse racial profile? Cause if... Seriously, like... There's, in real life, there is a, a, a lot of violence is committed by straight white cis men. So, I, I don't know why that, you know, I, people who look a lot like me, so, I, I don't know why so many people who also look a lot like me freak out when that's pointed out, but just, yeah. Um... Yeah, I like the thing about, you know, the, the, yeah, once, once she accepts that it's, that, that he didn't do it. And I do appreciate that they explain. It's not just like, ah, oh, you know, he wills his way out of the cuff. No, 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 the, you know, they, they tested his, his hands and, and there was no gunpowder residue kind of thing, you know. And, and, but, but yeah, you know, afterwards, you know, you want something stronger than that? He's drinking like orange juice or something. Like, wow. No, but I'll sit with you, which I do appreciate. I, I, and and they actually sit and have a moment. You know, I love when when movies like this can actually do that because it's very humanizing. You know, you get this thing about ah, oh, you know, she loved you. She loved my brother. You know, you were both like ex-military. Me, I'm you know FBI. She's like, that's nice. You know, that's, yeah, like, the, the, people, you know, that's, that, she feels like a real person. I, I quite appreciate that. And this thing of, it's not only, although, mainly, it's not only this thing of, you know, gotta go and, and 
get revenge kind of thing, but also just remembering the person that you lost. And yeah, they talk about how the red tape is going to make it very difficult to to stop the um, the phishing scammers. And and you know, honestly, I I respect. Kurt Wimmer writing, David Iyer directing, and Jason Statham saying, stealing, s stealing from old people is even worse than stealing candy from a baby because the baby has parents, but nobody takes care of old people. And it's just, it's so sincere. And honestly, like, yeah, seriously, there's, there's not actually... There's nothing technically incorrect there. That is sadly very true. The you know there, there are not enough. You know, there are a lot of of elderly people here in the West that are not being taken properly care of. And you know, again, it's 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 not that all of them are like you know shooting themselves. But there are a number of, you know, honestly, if you watch this movie and it really makes, it really opens your eyes to the fact that there are a lot of elderly who need, you know, some of us younger people to help take care of them, that's great. That's, that's wonderful if the, if the movie can do that. Let's see. And, yeah, he makes some, some B and, refer and Hornet references. And yeah, I so so Adam goes to the the building, and you know it, yeah goes up to the the receptionist saying, "So I'm looking for the call center. You're in the right place. Great. Could you get everybody who doesn't work at the call center to to leave the building because you know gasoline cans." And and you know I, I I admire her for being able to say, okay, thanks. And because what the fuck else are you gonna say to that? Like, no, you know, like, obviously you're not gonna, yeah. And and the so the the yeah, uh, Clay goes up to one of the one of the call center people and and he's like, ah, you know, I'm trying to deal with this. And I, th I think he like grabs a nose ring or something. He, he definitely like fucks with his nose. Which again, like you're sitting there in the theater, like, oh fuck, that's gotta hurt, you know. And just, yeah. Um. And and he, he tries to get them to to you know. He says, "Repeat after me," and, and no one's doing it. And then he engages in violence, and then they listen, which I I do quite appreciate that you know little detail that and and it, that happened several more times. You know, Clay starts out by just trying to tell people to behave and telling, you know, do you know what goes on here, you know, kind of thing. And, and you know, when that doesn't work, he resorts to violence, which is, of course, supposed to tell us, the, the audience, oh, I guess violence is the only answer to this problem, which, of course, in the real world is absolutely not the case. You know, we need to stop these fishing call centers, absolutely, but it's like... You know, through legal means, we have to, you know, but just, yeah. Again, if it can help make people realize, that, you know, the problem, then that's great. And see. And, and I do, it's, again, like, this. Kurt Wimmer is one of those people just, like, earnestly put this kind of thing in the movie. He gets them to repeat it. You know, he gets... Hmm. Just, yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. Oh, right, it was also quite fun when, you know, he walks up to the building and, you know, he's got the, the gas cans again, and, or even back then, and, and you know, one of them's like, I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. There, I did it for you. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And that's actually, yeah, that's the first time we see, you know, somehow... The, you know, 
they didn't draw their guns when he was far enough away, and now that he's closed, they're so slow at drawing their guns that he could just easily d dispatch them. Let's see. You know, it's it's very much like equilibrium. It's it's this thing of, you know, oh, he's just, like, impossibly amazing. So much faster and stronger than everybody he deals with. Uh, let's see. Then we have the... Yeah. Uh, Garnett turns out to be a complete coward once things are are going wrong and then we meet Derek Danforth and it's just it's such a glorious introduction so he's skateboarding in the office he's getting this like fancy barista coffee and there's rave music playing and there's some kind of you know I, I didn't quite catch what they they said it was but like yeah, some kind of fancy food, you know, thing. And, and yeah, it's like this... You can tell that, that, like, Kurt Wimmer is not a big fan of, like, the modern office environment. Because it's like, I'm not, per you know, I'm not personally, I, you know, I'm not super interested in, in stuff like that. But, like, the implication here kind of is that the more evil you are, the more likely you're, you are to enjoy these sorts of things, according to this movie. You know, I'm not saying... I'm, hopefully, the, you know, the, the, this does not reflect the actual beliefs. Hopefully, they, the, the Kurt Wimmer is not thinking that everybody who likes this kind of stuff is evil in real life, but just... I can't help but notice that it's not, you know, the, the, you know, we do briefly see the FBI offices. They don't look like that, you know, so it is this, yeah. Um, but it, um, some of it is accurate to a modern day, like, office environment. And, let's see. He, he had a hat. Oh, he, oh he, he had a hat. He had a hat. <sighs> and, and we meet Wallace Westworld, and he refers to, to the call center as the Metaverse Meth Lab, which, like, wow, there's a, there's a sentence, there's a couple of words that just, wow. And, and, yeah, you know, Derek tells Mickey, you know, get a couple of guys and go all good fellas on him. You're a made man. And, let's see. Yeah, and then we have this brief scene where, like, uh, let's see. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, um, FBI agent Matt Wiley, who, you know, we, we learn that his wife believes he's, like, he works IT or something like that. You know, he's he's like on the on the phone and and you know yeah his his like you know I, I th yeah I, th I believe they said you know wife you know his his wife is like you know heading out and he's like are are you leaving? Please don't go. And she says something like I'm I'm going to Yoda and you know yoga. Going to Yoda would. I'm not a fan of leaving. A crying baby behind but if you have a chance to go to Yoda uh, I mean how many times is that gonna be on on the table but but yeah I I, I mean I think they're trying to do a thing of like oh you know modern women they just don't want to take care of kids it's just like <laughs> it's so fucking random it has nothing to do with it like you could literally cut that and and nothing would be affect and and like again later we learn she thinks he works IT so it's not like she knows that you know like obviously if he is is you know dealing with a baby whilst like FBI shit is going down 
you know, maybe some, maybe an operation goes south or something. She has no idea. She thinks he's just going to be helping computers or, I don't know, dressing up as Pennywise. I don't know, some, something like that, you know. But no, just, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very... The movie just kind of sometimes has has ideas and just throws it at the wall, even if it doesn't at all go to because because it's not like it's not like a movie that's about mothers who aren't taking care of their kids because because certainly you know we can talk about if she did a wonderful job but you know I, uh, what what do they call I, th I think her name was Jessica here here she's just listed as president but you know Dan. Mama Danforth, you know, she, she seems to care a lot about Derek, you know, the, the, um, Eloise seems to have been a caring mother, so just, yeah. I think it's, I, I think, um, at one point, I think it's the yes, yeah, it's, it's the receptionist. Then they talk about oh, you know, she said oh, it was like a, a buff guy in his in his forties. Yes, one hundred percent. Jason Statham is in his forties. He is he is not fifty seven. That's one hundred percent accurate. Yes, maybe the the receptionist didn't want to come across as as like. I mean, I I don't think dude has aged well. I don't I don't know why we need to to pretend like honestly it's kind of badass that he looks like that. He's pushing sixty. There's people half his age who don't who don't look anywhere near that good. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not one of them. I'm not half his age. And the the let's see, yeah. So so Garnett manages to to find. Adam and they shoot the beehives. I mean, again, like you don't need. We already hate these guys. We are, and and you know everyone watching the movie already knows. You know bees are actually like literally in the real world as well. Bees are really important for us. You know, and and like yeah, they they like you know use their guns to just completely blow it away and there's like this massive swarm of bees and again I thought oh they're gonna attack but then they don't like that would have yeah it just several times the movie seemed to be going in a direction and then doesn't and when Adam is like taking out Mickey and the other you know there's again this horror movie vibe like we you know they're going into this dark empty area and you know, ah, oh, there's like a, a drill already running, and like, where is he? And you know, you see like the shadow or silhouette or something like that. Just and and once he does start taking them out, just really brutal shit. Did he pop a guy's eyeballs out, or am I like, fuck me? And yeah, Mickey again gets super whiny once it's. And the uh, let's see, yeah, and and Adam, you know, uses the the drill thing to to cut his fingers off, and he's you know, and 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 Mickey's like trying to do that. Oh, please, I, I I I can get you NFT to, to do crypto, <laughs> and and yeah, just like I do, I do hope that because I know a lot of. I think there's a certain amount of, of like overlap, as much as I'm sure Kurt Wimmer bristles at the thought. But I, I'm quite confident that there is a certain percentage of, of these NFT bros, motherfuckers, are, are like, you know, they love action movies. It, maybe it's already out there, but I would love for, for one of them to react to, to getting called out like this. Because this is a movie that fucking hates their guts. Like, again, would have been easy to, you know, the, the if they wanted to try to make it seem like, ah, oh, you know, not everybody who like crypto and, and NFTs are bad. And I don't think that they're all like 
evil. The ones who are trying to make money off, you know, tricking people into it, obviously evil. But a lot of them, you know, it, it appeals to, to people who are not just, like, complete, you know, gutter trash. But the, the yeah, a again, like, you could have had one of the FBI agents be, be talking about, you know, so I just got some NFTs, it seemed pretty good to me, you know, so something like that. But, no, the, the, <laughs> the movie really, really hates them, and, yeah, it is one of those things where just, like, I, I don't, I don't think I need to add. There's already, you know, we're all already laughing at NFT, you know, not, now that it's, it's, you know, basically crashed, you know, it's, I, I don't feel the need to add to, to that, especially considering this movie, yeah. And then we get the scene that I alluded to in the, in the review where, where Derek, you know, so what's your name? Fuck you. That's my name. I'm I'm fuck you. Remember that's that's Mr. Fuck you to you. You know, it just yeah. I I kind of want to see Logan Paul react to to the cuz there's so much Logan Paul. Like I haven't even seen that many clips. Mostly when I've seen clips of Logan Paul, it's like Cavernackle and others criticizing Logan Paul. But like there's a lot of Logan Paul going on there. That even even I can can see that, you know, and it just fuck like years ago, you know, I fuck, it's been almost 10 years. Yeah, 9 years ago when the last Hunger Games that that had Hutcherson in it, you know, came out, I would never have guessed that he would be playing this Logan Paul just yeah. Let's see, and and yeah, Adam said, you know, you you probably don't even have a will and testament. It is, you know, amazing. And then we're told that they make nine million dollars a month. I mean, that's just not even. We're talking purely from phishing scams. In America, nine million a month. There's no way you can that you can't keep that up for all that. Like, fuck me. Where where does Kurt Wimmer think old people are getting that amount of money? Like, even if you are scamming like every old person in America, nine million a month, and and they have twenty of these. So that's. that's Fuck me. Let's see. And yeah, we get some more hilarious beekeeper lore. And and yeah, we see that you know Derek is very much this mommy's boy, and you know, I at, at first I thought Wallace was his his father, but we're later told that that was not the case. But he is sort of a father figure. And so, yeah, you know, Daddy is solving his problems for him. He's very spoiled. And then we, like, there's the, there's the thing about that, like, Daddy Danforth, I almost said Daddy Derek, but that's a different person. A real one, if you could believe it. It's a, it's a... The guy who does the, the 420... Awards. I forget his name right now, but yeah, um, you know, Adam Johnson does videos on him. Anyway, um, Derek Danforth's father is is like gone. I think that's supposed to be like part of the like. There's because that's not always the there's there's a lot of people who you know grow up perfectly fine even though they don't have contact with the the you know their their birth father you know it's it's more important that 
you know, it is important that there are two parents. It's, it's you know, ideal, though that doesn't mean that people should be abusing, you know, single mothers. A lot of them didn't choose to, you know, they, they didn't make the man leave. The man left, left a, a child behind. But, yeah, again, it's, it's, it's this idea. Sometimes conservatives just hang on to these ideas that have been long since disproven. I, I realize that, like, decades ago, people were convinced that, you know, if, if uh, there's that, what is it called? I, I, uh, there's, a, there's a country song. I think it's called, Ma yeah, Mama Tried by Merle Haggard, you know. Yeah, the, the, there used to be this idea, and and for a while it, it was true, especially back when, like, uh, yeah, in in some environments it is still true, but there are a lot of people who grow up really well, even if they're you know they don't have a lot of contact to their their birth father, if they have a good stepfather. Let's see, yeah, and and the the current beekeeper is sent. To kill Clay. And we see the text message exchange. And, you know, once she is told, you know, kill, kill Adam Clay, she texts back, Ooh, fun, lol. <laughs> Just fucking amazing. Like, I, I guess, I, if, is that supposed to call out like everyone who who texts or everyone who like casual texts like that? Cause like, <laughs> yeah, that's wow. But yeah, the the fight at the gas station does definitely has some some pretty cool moments, and the the yeah you know minigun. Big fan of miniguns and in, in fiction. They're always really, really cool, and and it is pretty cool. The you know, like he he throws the the honey, super flammable. Who knew? And the the you know, unfortunately, some of it is like CG flames, but it did look like they had a few seconds of a full body burn, like a proper one. Very cool. Um, and and yeah, it is this thing of you know it's way too easy for Adam to stop the other beekeeper. Like this is supposed to be someone who's on the same level as him, you know. But again, you know, there's stuff like this in you know equilibrium also has you know the the protagonist somehow able to just easily take out these people who should be a, a challenge. Um, honestly, I thought the, the whole FBI thing was almost entirely pointless. Like, I don't hate the idea of the, 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 the daughter of, of Verona Parker, you know, popping up every so often. I don't think they needed to have it as this thing of, you know, her having a, a job at the FBI and there being you know, kind of back and forth antagonistic. You know, some of the time she, she kind of does want to go along with what Adam says and does other times. Not really. I think it would have worked fine if it was just, you know, she finds out about her mother and every so often Adam contacts her and tells her I'm taking care of it or something. You know, if you, if you really wanted that character in there. But the FBI don't really change and like there's a couple of times where the reason there's as many people for Adam to to take out as there are is the FBI involvement but since they don't you know they don't change anything it doesn't lead to him actually having you know it's not as though you can't do this sort of thing well you know I think the the Bourne trilogy do quite a good job there's only three movies shut up in the Bourne series the the you know those yeah it's it's moves and counter moves you know the the CIA are always trying to you know to figure out what is what is Bourne going to do next and if they can stop him and that actually changes what Bourne has to do but here like it's 
you know, it doesn't particularly change anything. And I, I really did not think the, the quips that the FBI characters were, were delivering particularly worked. And again, I, I don't think that it is Emmy Raver Lampman who plays Verona, Agent Verona Parker. I don't think it's her fault. I, I really do think it's, it's the material she's given. I don't think anybody could have made that material sing. Let's see. And... Right, we have, yeah, uh, Westworld uh, addresses this room of gun bros, kind of, like, they're they're not, they're clearly not taking you very seriously, and you know, he talks about, oh, the, the nation is like a beehive, and, you know, yeah, Adam is going to kill his way to the top of the beehive. And, and yeah, they do that thing where, yeah, Adam gets access to the beekeeper base, because he grabbed the the finger off Aniset. And and yeah, um, I I'm afraid I didn't pick up his his name, but one of the, um, yeah, the other call center leader is like literally getting off on stealing money, and you know one of them's like. I'm sorry, boss. We weren't able to steal as much money this time. It's like, ah, oh, fuck you. What the fuck's wrong with you? Just amazing. And yeah, Adam takes out some some FBI people, and then we see he's already inside of the of the call center. And yeah, he uses staples to to torture information out of the guy which you know I've seen it before but still not bad and yeah you have them you know replacing the queen and and yeah um Adam does not kill agent Matt Wiley you know I I've got four kids I know three boys one girl you know and and I guess maybe that's why that maybe that is the explanation for why there was the scene earlier, but they didn't need to have like the mother of the baby leave for for that to but but yeah. You know, and and I appreciate that, but then on the other hand, like he is like he does attack some of the people that or was he always careful to be non-lethal? I suppose it maybe it was only the private sec security people that he, yeah, <laughs> and and yeah, um, Westworld is is out with this this woman, and she's like, so what do you prefer, the money or the power? And he's like, D deep question. Which I mean, there there are you know positive depictions of, of women in in the movie, and for sure you know some we we do know some some women that you know run in these circles that are like that that you know love really really rich people. Yeah, some of them are really really unappealing. You know, I, again, I'd have a huge problem with it if not for, but, you know, really, yeah, let's see. Verona is largely positive. Eloise is positive. You know, for, for a while it seems like touch and go with, with the president, but yeah, by the end, she is actually a, a positive depiction. It's really, it really is only this, you know, the, the you know, do you prefer money or power woman? And then the, the you know... Agent Matt Wiley's wife are really the only women that, and, and you know, Anisette. Let's see. And I, I did enjoy the the reveal of you know, you know, maybe you need to work with your mother on this. Okay, you know, and call and sure you can you can come this weekend and you know the the um. Crap, what was her 
name again, uh, uh, Kelly Crane, Sophia Feliciano, you know, oh wow, I, huh, I guess she just, I really thought I'd seen her in something else, but she's listed as only having three roles. Maybe she just looks like, or is there more than one? Hold on, I gotta, real quick, because there's, okay, there's a lot of women with similar name. Anyway, um, yes, you know, she's like, yes, I love to babysit, you know, and then Madam President and the music stings like, dun, 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 you know, like, just, yeah, that was, that was fun. And, and yeah, um, basically... Dan, the, the, you know, yeah, um, Jessica Danforth used to run businesses and, you know, the money from those businesses was used to basically, you know, she bought her way into the presidency, so like Donald Trump, and then, you know, so, so, you know, when, when that was revealed that that, you know, when the FBI realized that, I was like, oh, so it's, you know, it's a condemnation of Trump. But then by the end, it's like, oh, you know, got to tell the truth. You know, this is not okay. I didn't know my son was doing this with my businesses. So I guess they're trying to to say that Trump didn't just, he just didn't know about all the, the crimes that he was doing as a president. Like, this is such a confused, and, and like, you know... <laughs> The fact that they specifically, like, I don't know, is there a Hillary Clinton vibe to her? Maybe a little bit? And and some people have, you know, interpreted it as, oh, it's like, you know, Biden or, or Clinton, because the, you know, conservatives are now convinced that Biden and Clinton were as criminal as, as Trump, which, you know, they love it when it's Trump, but they know that they kind of have to try to distract from Trump's crimes, so they just accuse others. I'm not saying, you know, for sure, there's shady shit that, you know, Clinton and Biden, you know, have done, but it's nowhere near the level of Trump. Trump is a career criminal. He's been committing crimes for as long as he's been able to. Let's see, and... Right, the yeah, they're welding shut manholes, and then he he gets up through one of the manholes and get uh, gets up under a car, and it's like this is fucking this is Hitman Agent Forty Seven. This is like there's there's a thing very similar to that in the second Hitman in in Hitman Two Silent Assassin. I fucking love it. I I can't believe that's actually. Yeah, it's Kurt Wimmer is the the who you need if you're gonna put shit like that from a literal video game, like fucking video game shit in a a big blockbuster movie. I I love it, and and it is very clever of him to to hide as, you know to pose as the member of the Secret Service that was checking for him. And and Derek is trying to, to hit on this girl and he's talking up crypto. Just and yeah, when when the FBI confronts, you know, Derek doesn't want to own up to the businesses he runs. And yeah, and once um, I think it's Lazarus who has you know clay on his knees and it's like he's got something in his hand he's clearly got something that what why are you not telling him to throw down the thing in his hand or something but just yeah and yeah you know he blows up the car and the climax begins and um the hell did I write? 
Oh, right, right. The this thing of the yeah, Danforth D Derek says you know, it's it's something like, you know, as, as, yeah, his his mother is like, you've heard people and he's like just computer data, that's all. Just which again, like that really reminds me that that gives me more of a vibe of like Zuckerberg or something like one of maybe Musk you know one of one of those people who genuinely doesn't seem to understand that it is real life people that are are getting hurt you know the yeah yeah that that definitely made me think more of musk than which i guess also like him hitting on women there's maybe some musk going on there as well Although if they really wanted to hammer that home, they'd bring up the thing about you know offering to to buy a horse or something, or maybe that maybe they were worried about getting sued if they made it that overt. I kind of love again just the earnestness of like Kurt Wimmer actually wrote this shit. Tell the truth. What does that even mean? Which, like, honestly, yeah, there's a lot of cons there, there's a lot of politicians who, like, just you know, establishment politicians, not only like Republicans, but also some of the Democrats, like, legitimately, like, what do you mean, tell the truth? That that doesn't make any sense. Let's see, and. Yeah, uh, pretty cool when Clay is fighting. I think it's the guy that, uh, Lazarus, Lazarus, I think is the, based on the, at, at least, it, you know, it, yeah, the, the guy in yellow who, yeah, um, wasn't the biggest fan of the fact that, so, he did kill a beekeeper once, but he lost his leg doing it. And then they do that thing where, yeah, he loses his leg. He loses his prosthetic limb near the, the end of the fight. And that makes him struggle with, with fighting Clay. I mean, again, I think the idea is supposed to be he lost his leg doing something evil. So he shouldn't get to have a prosthetic limb. I don't know. It just still ends up kind of kind of ableist and, and gross. Just yeah. Let's see. Yeah, and we have you know you decide who you work for, the law or justice. And I think that is about yeah. And and he shoots Derek, and makes his escape in part you know part of the reason he's able to escape is because Verona does let him go and I do think I've, you know it was supremely satisfying when he shot Derek right in the, like right in the forehead you know just you know I I'm so glad honestly when I watched the trailer you know Derek is not in very much of the trailer he's he, you know the the uh, Mickey Garnett is in more of the trailer and he's in much less of the movie so I'm really glad that Derek was actually in so much of the movie because he he was so much fun just yeah um but the the uh, let's see what was the thing um yeah I I think that it needed something slightly bigger when he escapes there at the end just some kind of big Let's see. I mean, they already did an explosion there. Just some, yeah. It just kind of cut, and then the credits start rolling. And like, we we see enough to appreciate how he's going to get away from there. I just think it needed a slightly more epic, like, final image. And this is something that otherwise, you know, Kurt Wimmer has has done a really great job. Again, you know, final shot of equilibrium. That's fucking memorable, you know, but. Yeah. I don't I also don't quite know this is you know Wimmer has written several of these things where 
the protagonist breaks someone's fingers. You know, in this one, Clay breaks Westwell's fingers near the end. And, you know, yeah, there's several bits like that in Equilibrium. He really... Maybe maybe he fears someone breaking his fingers and, and arms and such. Or maybe he just really hates fingers. But it's, it's satisfying to watch. I did think, you know, right before Jeremy Irons leaves the movie, you know, there's that thing about... There's something like the... the I forget the exact line, but he says, you know, Westwell says, you know, I, I get it, you care about this and that, and and Clay says, I don't care about that. And then Westwell says, what do you care about? Which is, of course, a setup for Clay to say, justice, or so, something along those lines, you know. That felt kind of forced. I think that is... Let's see... So, let's see. Um, yeah, so the... Yeah, that is it for this one. So, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments what is your favorite movie of Wimmer and or Iyer? And if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. Once more links to stuff like Relevant Plays. This is just a video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I am, I feel like I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to end this. But, yeah. Um, catch you next time.